We'd spent the last two weeks sailing in some pretty challenging conditions and waiting for the right moment to make our overnight passage in safe conditions along the south coast of Tasmania to arrive at Port Davey on the west coast. It is hard to describe the feeling of satisfaction of returning to the remote wilderness, to a place with no cell phone reception and no roads. It is the reason why we live and travel on our little sailboat and we felt at home alone in the wild once more. What's the verdict, Pesky? It's gorgeous. Oh, snap. I knew that was coming. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30-foot, 50-year-old sailing boat, Marul. Living off the land and sea while sailing a yacht that costs less than a new car, we show that it's possible to have big adventures with a seaworthy boat on a very modest budget. Thanks for subscribing to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell button to stay notified of all our upcoming releases. Okay, today we are having an adventure, going on an adventure, what do you reckon? What do you say? <laughs> going for an explore. We're going for an explore. <laughs> um, now, you, all of you that have been with us for a while, you're familiar with our porter boat. And you know why I bought that porter boat primarily is because crocodiles were a limiting factor but now that we've come down to tasmania we're very short on crocodiles and <laughs> sorry <it's>, tim <laughs> sorry sorry mr brown um but it has opened up another opportunity for us and um a bit of a a bit of a passion that's had to sit by the wayside we love kayaks right yeah and um, obviously we're on a 30 foot boat and that makes life really hard <laughs> to store a kayak, like a big hard kayak. But when we were in Sydney, we were casting around for ideas because we wanted to kayak down here around Tassie, getting around in the quiet, um, no engine and everything really appealed to us. And we came across, and we're not affiliated with these people in any way, um, and this is not a promotion. We're about to try out some of the advanced elements, inflatable kayaks. So what we went and got was the... What's that? That's the Air Fusion Evo. Evo. We like this kayak. We went and had a look at a bunch of inflatable kayaks, but these ones are actually, how would you put it, kayak shaped? Yes, they are like, they're nice and narrow. So they're kind of like a little bit like a rigid, they feel like a rigid kayak a bit more than just like it kind of inflatable dinghy with a, in a kayak kind of shape. <laughs> yeah, so, some, some of the inflatables, we felt that they were a little bit like a surf mattress. Yeah. <laughs> But we saw these, in, and Pascal in particular liked them because they've got a bit of a tube frame in them. They've got a little bit of a hard shine to them. So we've had a bit of a, a play around with them off camera. But I think we'll just have a bit of a look because people on a small boat, um, you really have to make a lot of compromises. Um, you know, it's it's not all just easy going. And obviously on a 30-footer, we make compromises with space. People say, oh, you need a bigger boat. Well, we might want a bigger boat. We don't actually need a bigger boat. Um, <laughs> and not having a bigger boat means that, well, we can go out sailing a lot more instead of like devoting lots and lots of cash to maintaining a bigger boat. Yeah. But anyway, enough of that ramble. <laughs> the first thing we have to do is to get these kayaks. Where the hell do we store them? <laughs> yes, in our Mary Poppins boat as our friend. <laughs> our friend Ian, Ian out there at Mackenzie Marine. Uh, yeah, if you're in Pittwater or Sydney, go and see Mackenzie Marine. He's obviously not busy enough. He's making jokes at our expense. <laughs> he's Ian. That uh, he's a he's a wooden ship enthusiast and a, a really great um, boat builder. So yeah, if you've got a wooden boat in the Sydney region, go and give him some business and let him keep him busy so he's not hassling us. All right. <laughs> anyway, so back here is where we've got all our stuff. Right, Pesky, let's uh, let's get it out. What's that? Sleeping mat. Haven't used that. 
We can if we want to. Haven't used it very much. But we much. haven't used it. What's this? Some people say, what's that? It's not a it's not a machine gun or anything like that. In there is a banjolele tuned to G C E A. No, you haven't seen me play it because I don't want to subject you to it. <laughs> Next. Next. Alright. This bag contains all of our editing equipment. Yeah, and we wouldn't even carry this bag if we weren't making free range sailing. It's heavy, it takes up space, but we have to have it. It's two computers and charges. It's, it's two computers, it's a bunch of silicon, pets, those little silicon Hard sets. drives and... A camera bag. Same bottle. What is in here? This, also heavy. This is more camera equipment. There's tripods, there's drones, there's a few tent pegs. Audio gear. Audio gear. A spare computer. A spare computer. So this, again, this is another free range sailing tub. Yeah. You wouldn't need this if you weren't making videos. <laughs> and you can, you can see. <laughs> it's heavy. I'll put that down there. So you can actually see we actually have to make quite a compromise on our living space just to bring these videos. Every now and then we'll get, you know, someone saying, oh, why don't you just get a real job? <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> All right, so another sleeping mat that we can use if we go camping. Another sleeping mat. Also, if people join us on the boat, we need to make their bed comfortable. So we've used a sleeping mat for that when we had AB around. So that's part of the kayak. I was out there looking, uh, I was mucking around with it and I didn't put it away because I'm a messy person. <laughs> Bad. All right, so here we go. We're uh, oh. Oh, there's bits of... Spares, the spares, put them down. Alright. First kayak. So let's put this this is what the this is what the kayak looks like and we'll put Pascal there. So it's about my size torso in yeah. my head. So yeah. if you'd like a Pascal sized package on your boat, you can't have Pascal. There's only <laughs> one of them. But this kayak is about that size when it's packaged. Anyway, we'll go. A bit out. wider than me, a but bit. you know. <laughs> Pascal's not very wide. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll we'll go and put these on deck, and we'll we'll put them together, and that'll be the next step. Yep. Yeah, they're not heavy. These kayaks take a little bit of practice to set up quickly and this was our third time doing it. They get their form from poles which run along the base of the kayak under the removable foam floor as well as from the cockpit to the bow. The sides of the kayak and the rear and front ports are separate inflatable chambers. The seat clips in easily and can be adjusted to suit posture preference. All up, the setup time for us was about 20 minutes per kayak but I'm sure we'll get faster at setting them up the more we do it. So we got our, uh, we've got our kayaks in the water and... It's been a few months so it took a bit longer than expected but... It was a bit bumbling wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. But um, alright, anyway we're going we're gonna to shoot through but before we do we'll just take a few safety items, we'll show you what they are. Right, so we're going off Here's our blue, away from the yacht. Here's our blue drum. And normally this is what we would take in the porter boat when we're in the Kimberleys and it's got all sorts of stuff in it. But for this trip, we're going to take our flare kit. This is also our grab bag if everything goes completely south or completely pear-shaped. So here's our flare kit. So there's some rockets and there's some smoke. Put that in there, Pascal. Safety regulation V-sheet. These are a bit outdated now. I'm, I'm not sure if they're a, a, a requirement. Over a, when up in Queensland, they sort of phased these out, but I really like them. Big orange sheet with a big black V, but they can be used to catch water, shelter from the rain, all sorts of stuff. But mainly, they can be used to signal to the air and other people. You put this big orange sheet out and it makes you a lot more visible, especially in the drab surrounds of uh, down in the bottom of the world. <laughs> drab. We've got this little PLB. Personal locator beacon. Woo! Just a little EPIRB. It's just, people love giving new names to different stuff, lots of acronyms and stuff. So here we go, to our little ACR. We just update this periodically. It's just a 406 megahertz um, beacon, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's got GPS, talks to satellites, calls the cavalry if we're in trouble. And, you know, like we're just going for a little bit of a kayak, but we're prone to exploring. 
So with one of these, you, look, we're not going very far, but let's say, for instance, that you, one of you suffered a snake bite. One of the treatments for that is immobilize them. Strap it, make sure they don't move. If you have to stay with them, um, you can't go to get help. This is just a scenario, right? It's not mm. the only use for this, but you could imagine that you'd be quite comforted if you had your 406 EPIRB rather than, because a lot of people have trundled off to get help and then, oh, what turn did I take? Yeah, there we go, Pascal's, Pascal's immobilized in the bush, probably uh, getting more and more anxious and I'm lost <laughs> trying to guide a party back. Mm. In the bag. We've Troy proof the whole operation. <laughs> um, and of course, in this plastic bag, when we still had a um, when we still had a, a heat shrink machine, we used to plastic wrap various first aid items to make them um, impervious to moisture yeah. and everything else like that. I've kept the plastic bags. I'm I'm loath to throw anything away, particularly hard plastic. But we've still got various things. So a thermo thermo blanket, stuff to address snake bite, and stuff to address puncture wounds. Um, and we can leave all the rest of the stuff in here because a lot of it is to make a dinghy go again. Would you like to take some heavy duty insect repellent? Yes, in case we get stuck somewhere. Yep. Um, and that is... And do we have the puncture kit for the kayaks? Yes. So those kayaks, they come with a little repair kit and they're in the seat. They actually put them in a little pocket in the back of the seat there. So we've got those. Mm -hmm. So that takes care of that. We're going to take our... Wear our life jackets. We're going to wear our life jackets. <laughs> A, it's legislation here in Tassie um, and in New South Wales. I think if you're kayaking more than what 200 metres, yeah, from something shore or off the shore, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Um, life jackets in cold waters, they make they make a lot of sense. Um, if you have to stay in the water, if you're swanning about and oh, exposing your your armpits and your groin, you can lose heat really quickly. If you are in a spot where you have to wait it out, you're much better off to huddle up. And if you're like me, you'll just sink to a stone, like a stone to the bottom if you do that. Whereas with a life jacket, you can actually, you can actually do that. Or you can even huddle, you know, and sort of kick your way back to shore um, in cold water. Mm. So we're wearing these. Yes, it's legislation, um, and you know we're not we're not pro kayakers, but you do see the experienced guys getting around. They're wearing a life jacket. It's good enough for them. It's good enough for us. We're taking them. <coughs> um, and finally, obviously, Pascal is going to have her hydration bladder in this, and I've got mine in there as well. Your backpack. I've got. You would have seen this backpack. It's been with me for seven years. I bought this as a computer laptop backpack. <coughs> Who makes these? Crumpler. There you go. Yeah. As long as we're as long as we're talking about brands that give us no money to talk about them, <laughs> but, <laughs> but do make a good product. This this Crumpler backpack. It's unbelievably good. The zips have never frozen. It takes a water bladder. It's incredibly tough. Seven years. And you've seen, like, we're not just idly sitting around in a lounge room. This thing's been on my back just about every day. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, really amazing. It's amazing. And it's, it's so strong. Anyway, what are you going to take in your backpack? Are you going to take your parang? Um, nah, you've got all the stuff. I might the just, knives? I might, just take a, I might just take some um, fishing equipment. Yep, that sounds good. So these kayaks, they do, they really handle like a hard kayak. Um, obviously I don't think they're as efficient through the water as a hard kayak and that's all right, they're a compromise, aren't they? They're a portable solution. But I can see us hanging onto these um, you know, for a long time. It doesn't matter where you really went, they just come in that, that bag, they're fairly lightweight. They really do handle well. So, so far I'm pretty happy with them but we'll, we'll see how everything irons out with a bit more use for the next month or so. Smooth? Pretty smooth. So I think we've come here just in the, the right time of the year and when we were looking at the, um, the long range weather forecasts, it told us that we were going to get about a week of goodish weather. Um, down here on the west coast of Tasmania, things can change really quickly, but what we've got is a, a nice, big, stable, high pressure system. So today, you know, we'll have winds coming from the south and the southwest, and then through the week, it'll shift more and more around. So we're going to just enjoy ourselves here for today and tomorrow and then we're going to move down 
and we'll just see what our little shortwave radio tells us is going to happen. So this water we can hardly see into it because of all the, the tannin outflow from the rivers here. So here you can see some weed but you can see like the visibility beyond it is not very great. But that's like we're pretty high up in the um in the arm of the of the arm of Port Davy here. It's like paddling around in wheat coffee. Yeah. A giant cup of tea. Well I think paddling uh paddling this little air fusion Evo it tracks through the water really really easily. It paddles well. I guess the original kayaks when the Inuit were first going hunting polar bears and things like that, they were a skin on a frame. I mean modern um, modern fiberglass kayaks they're incredibly efficient through the water and also they're a nice low profile. This one, um, it's a it's essentially a, a skin on a frame kayak, it's just that the frames happen to be <laughs> massive well-shaped balloons. So we're tracking along pretty well. The high sides mean that doing an Eskimo roll if we fell out of this would be quite hard. Um, the actual way that we get back into these out of the water is to, I'm not going to do it at the moment because the water's like nine degrees. But the, the way we do it is sort of a little bit like a bear climbing a tree. Get onto the stern and piggyback your way up until you're sitting across, across here um, and slide your feet in. And then it's just a case of bailing the water out. These are inflatable um, so they don't sink. With regards to portable kayaks, there's a bit of history, isn't there, in Australia. The Z Force guys who um, back in World War II were a bunch of, bunch of volunteers became, um, you know, they went to commando school. And they went to blow up quite a bit of uh, Japanese shipping in Singapore. But their choice of delivery vehicle was folding kayaks. Again, skin on frame. Fold boats. And they did a lot of training. And they, they were pretty successful. They sent a fair bit of metal to the bottom of the Singapore harbour. So obviously with these kayaks, we can go places where you just can't go with a dinghy. Where uh, you can see here we just walked our way in. Now it's getting deep enough where I can actually put a paddle in the water, so that's great. But it's uh, incredibly serene in here and you know that no one's going to be able to get in with an outboard. <laughs> Dirty feet. No. Sit your ass down there, dog. <laughs> now, what do you do? Get your center of gravity low. Oh, Jesus. Hmm. Then you get chap. Oh, this is pretty fresh, this water. actually quite a little bit of flow now this fresh water this creek that we're in is very much fresh water and I can see the water moving out back towards the ocean which is pretty cool so we've reached the uh, we've reached the end of it and you can see that oh, it's cold. <laughs> it is really cold this water this fresh water here is Freezing. <laughs> um, but you can see, like this tea colour, all of these, um, all of these streams flowing into Port Davy are coming through. You know, all this runoff that's coming through all this tea tree swamp, and it's giving it this tannin-stained water. It tastes really great, um, and it doesn't taste like tea. It doesn't really taste like it doesn't taste acid or no, bitter in like any way. Water. But it is all stained really dark. <laughs> it's really crazy. What are you doing? wash my hair. It's not wash wash, just rinse it. I haven't washed my hair in like two weeks since we left Hobart. Part of small boat living is not having all the luxuries like uh, being able to spare lots of fresh water for hair washing. Pascal reckons this acidic mountain water is going to make her hair soft and beautiful. Just don't headbutt the rock. Yeah. Oh jeez. Oh, I feel alive. 
I bet you do. Woo! My hair's quite insulating. It's not too bad, actually. You haven't had it run down your back yet? No, I'm not going to have it run down my back. What? Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's not as noisy as I thought it was going to be. I thought they'd be howling. No. Maybe <laughs> if it was your hair. Yeah. You don't have any hair to insulate your head. It's so short. My head already hurts just looking at yours. <laughs> Do you want me to bump you? Okay. No bumping? No, no bump. Oh, I'm coming. Be ready. Sorry, I'll push you. Oh, that was very smooth. Like a boss. You like him? Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Maybe I stick my feet out. Because yes. you, you, can, you can use your feet to take weight off and then slide it under you. Push this around with your duff. <laughs> As we're walking along here, we're finding um, we're finding quite a few animal tracks, and we're going to have a look what we got. We've got some Tassie Devil tracks. We've been following it it's all up the beach. It goes in between trees. It never tracks up a tree like a possum would. <laughs> like a Tassie Devil. Well, Troy's pretty busy here. Doing some work on the computer. What exactly are you doing? Computer work, boom. <laughs> um, I just made up an Excel spreadsheet. So I just enter in um, like our fuel transfers, when we bunker on, what we use. And also just the maintenance that we do. Um, you know, and keep a track of engine hours and like when we've done some things. You know, when I've gone up the, gone up the rig and um, checked the stays. Also made a note of like any time we shifted any hardware around the place, it just helps us keep track of things. And it also reminds me when I'm supposed to do a oil change, which was 10 hours ago. <laughs> so. Nope. I got a little bit behind in my data entry. <laughs> and I am cooking us some miso and butter carrots for dinner. Post kayaking. Yeah, it's like the last of our vegetables. Well, last of a. Mm, no, there's a couple more, but that's mainly it. There's a few potatoes and stuff. I just added white miso paste. And they're cooking in a lot of butter. That's what they were cooking in before. I added white miso paste. Like two tablespoons of butter. And then once they've just started to go a bit brown, I'll add some honey in there and a bit of salt. And then we're just going to eat them with our fingers. Honey. The dolphins are absolutely amazing right now. String up our long line antenna for our shortwave radio. Whoa! <laughs> the dolphin's jumping around the boat. Time to get the weather. Australia weather west on HF frequency 
So we've got our weather report, nothing really that dramatic, westerly 10 knots tomorrow, getting up to 10 to 15 knots uh, in the morning, and then it just looks like it's shifting from the northwest over to the east northeast uh, on Wednesday and on Thursday, so we'll use that to get the hell out of here. Mm. <laughs> so that's, what do you reckon about that plan? Sounds good. There will be a little bit of crosswind when we're coming back to the boat I reckon tomorrow. So It's going to be hard work. Nah. I think where where we'll be we'll be sheltered from the west, so that'll be all right. So tomorrow we're going to go for another kayak trip up to up the Davy River. We're going to have another explore tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's it. Weather report. It all looks pretty good. Um, westerly winds. That's all as planned, and then it's going to slowly shift more to the north and to the east on Wednesday and Thursday. It also looks like what's happening out there in the broader world. At the moment, it's only one metre swells coming from the southwest, but it is getting up to 2 to 2.5s later on. And that's why the weather's still nice, and that indicates that there's quite a big system coming and it's pushing a swell ahead of it. Mm. Not that we have to worry too much, because we're going to always just be lurking around little bays and trying to find waterfalls and mm. other things. But, yep, tomorrow is another... Kayaking day. Another day in the kayaks. Woohoo! <laughs> and we're on to course, second course. With the food. <laughs> <laughs> we had the carrots, now we're having potatoes. Want to describe what's in here for us, Dal? Yep, it's pink eye potatoes. Yep. The Tassie specialty, they're like new potatoes. Yep. Fried in butter. Fried in butter. Parboiled really like. and fried in butter. Yep. And then with yogurt, which we're using like sour cream, anchovy, cheddar, spring mm. onion, chili, and radish. It's good. Good. If you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as it really helps us get more exposure. Thanks for watching and see you next week.